approximately 1 a.m. in the morning. I'm just kidding. It's really 6.15 p.m. This is just what Canada looks like. It's pitch black outside. So we're shooting with the new Sony A1 today. It is the mothership of all Sony cameras right now, and we are so very excited. I know what you're thinking. Maybe I'm gonna sit here, recite a lot of the tech specs that you've already heard, but you know what? I'm gonna leave that to Gerald. Let him do his thing. And maybe I'm gonna be out in the field in a beautiful, sunny location, shooting some in-the-field tests. Well, you know what? I'm gonna leave most of those to Julia because she in Australia and uh, I don't really like being outside here and I'm pretty sure you can see why. So my big question with this camera was how does it perform in low light and especially how does it perform in low light against my a7s3? So that is exactly what we shall be doing today. And just a quick disclaimer guys before we get started, Sony did lend me this camera to be able to do this little comparison but they are not paying me to do this video nor do they get to see this video before it's posted. So all of of the opinions and insights that I have in this video are my own. I just thought you might be interested in that. I am not getting paid for this one, except by Squarespace. First, we'll be looking at some 4K footage shot in S-Log3 on both cameras. For all these outdoor tests, we were at a shutter speed of 1 over 50 and an aperture of f5.6. I applied a Rec. 709 LUT to the S-Log3 footage so that we weren't just looking at mush here. Before we get too far in these city skyline comparisons, I'll preface it by saying that we started all the tests at ISO 2000, but it was too dark to really be able to see any noise or anything for that matter until about ISO 6400. At that point, you start to see it in the light areas on the CN Tower, and it's much more grainy in the A7S III. When we reach ISO 12800, the A7S III cleans up like a boss, and both the A1 and A7S III look the same to me. This is a common theme with the A7S III, as you'll see throughout this video. Keep in mind, we're shooting an absolute pitch black for this test. This particular test isn't as much a low light test as it is a no light test. We'll get to low light later on. It was also windy as hell, so so don't focus too much on the sharpness. Again, these tests are just for you to see what these cameras can achieve in extremely dark conditions. We ran the same test in Cine 4 and noticed a similar result with the A7S III cleaning up at ISO 12800. However, at lower ISOs like 6400 or 8000, I felt that the A1 had more noticeable grain. Anything past 16000 looks across the board pretty unusable to me, but I find that the A1's grain is rougher. Makes sense when you think about the 50 megapixels in the A1 sensor versus the 12.2 in the A7S III and how they both would behave in low light. To me, it looks like the A7S III has more chromatic noise as compared to the A1, which appears more black and white. Usually, less chromatic noise is preferred. Next is a Cinetone test on the new A1. This is the test that I was most looking forward to because none of my other Sony bodies have the Cinetone picture profile. I noticed that this picture profile offers a nice, soft look, even without any correction or grading to it. I started to see some grain around ISO 6400, but it's still tasteful and not too distracting until past 12,800. One thing I am noticing with the A1 footage is that in the top corners, you can see the feathering of the noise in the fall off of the light glow from the city. The biggest caveat to the photo tests are that on the A1, I was only able to shoot JPEGs because there isn't a firmware update out yet for me to view the raw files. For the photos, we kept the aperture at f5.6 and adjusted the shutter speed every time we changed the ISO so that the image always metered at even exposure. On the A1, I started to see a diminishing return after ISO 10,000, which is where the grain started to look kind of patchy. The A7S III photos clearly got creamed by the A1 in this test. It literally looks like a swarm of flies has invaded the city. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're 
ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. Now onto the indoor tests. For this scene, we set up a subtle spotlight just out of frame and added in a plant and a bear for texture. First, an S-Log3 comparison. Now all looks dandy until we get to ISO 6400 where the A7S III starts to have some grain. The A1 demolishes the A7S III at any point in the 5000 to 10,000 range. Again, once we get up to ISO 12800, the A7S III cleans up and surpasses the A1. This is true at ISOs above that point as well, up until about 20,000 where both start to look like poo poo. Next, we have the same indoor test, but this time using the Cine 4 picture profile. Up until ISO 16,000, the A1 looks really solid. The shot has lots of detail in the veins of the leaves. However, at anything past ISO 16,000, the A7S III looks cleaner. Next is a video test using no picture profile. I will say that you really shouldn't shoot with no picture profile because it will result in an image that has the least flexibility to edit with in post. But we're here for science. So similar to the Cine 4 test, the A1 is cleaner up until ISO 16,000, at which point we notice more noise in the A1. However, the change is subtle. Next is another Cinetone test with the new A1. The shots look good until ISO 10,000, where we start to see some grain in the leaves. But truth be told, it's not too bad. Anything past ISO 16,000 is just dust. For the indoor photo tests, we started to see grain around ISO 6400, especially in the shadows of the images. That being said, the grain is still more noticeable on the A7S III because of its texture. On the indoor tests, I noticed that the dynamic range on the A1 was much better, and that's just with the JPEGs. I can only imagine how much flexibility the RAWs with 50 megapixels will have. These tests were definitely just meant for science and not art, so don't judge me on my composition, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps support this channel. Comment, subscribe even if you want to stick around. And if you really want to make sure you get notified when I post every video, because I post videos weekly, then hit that notification bell and I will see you guys in the next one. No bear purring today. No, can't take her out here. She would for sure hate it. Just the we alone in the wind. <sighs> Ha <laughs> ha.